testing, testing, one, two. What's up fam and welcome back. My name is Marissa and if you're new around here, it's my mission to help people simplify their way to a happier and better life. And for some people, that means working to save more money and find more financial peace and freedom. Wow, the light is just like crazy going in and out today. Sorry for that. So at the beginning of this month, I challenge you guys to do a no spin challenge along with me. And this video marks the end of that no spin challenge. And if you're joining me later in the process, like if this is the first video that you have seen, don't worry because I will make sure to link the entire playlist. Wow, it just got really dark again. I will make sure to link the full playlist down in the description box below for you to check out so that no matter when or where you're starting from, you can go back to the start and follow along with me and watch all the videos and do the no spin challenge together. So what I want to do today with you is to kind of walk you through how our no spend month went, what went well, what went wrong, and any challenges or lessons that we learned along the way. So hit that like button if you enjoy saving money. And if you did this challenge along with me the whole time and you have reached this video, I want you to drop me a comment down below and let me know how did it go? Did you find it easy? Did you find it hard? How much money did you save? How much money did you spend? Leave me your thoughts and comments. I look forward to reading them and let's dive in. All right, so as far as our no buy month, what did we cut? So for our no buy month, the areas that we cut were groceries, eating out, dining out, drinking out, any of that. Shopping and activities, anything related to transportation and also stuff for the kids. So no new books, no new toys, anything like that. And we all talked about it and agreed on things as a family. So we went into this all as a team, which I think is very important if you're doing this as a family. Having everyone on the same page and knowing that you're gonna stop spending money for a month. Now, I do wanna point out that when I say we cut money on groceries, we didn't really cut it a whole lot because groceries are one thing that I really, really prioritize as a mom and as a minimalist, that's something that I don't mind spending money on. How is it guys? Is it the best strawberries ever? Mm -hmm. Feels so good to eat strawberries after a long winter, right? Mm -hmm. Am I allowed to show you in your workout clothes? Oh, flex. <laughs> Let's eat some strawberries. Okay. These look wonderful. We buy organic milk, organic eggs, organic cheeses. We try to buy organic meats. So there's a lot of things that we buy organic that if we really wanted to save more money, we could cut and buy the regular versions of that. But that's just a choice that we have made to continue eating organic for certain things. And I took an audit of what we had in our pantry and I was using my printable meal planner to plan out our meals every week, just like I always do. And I was really trying to use what we have a little bit more, kind of dig back in the back of the cabinets. Shopping what you have in your pantry and maybe what you have forgotten about, you can save a little bit of money there. And then something else that I do is when I cook in the evenings, I usually try to make enough so that there will be leftovers for the next day. So for example, one night I was making chicken parmesan, and which by the way is absolutely amazing with mayo and jalapenos on a tortilla. And I cannot take credit for this. This was my husband's invention. I told him he was crazy, but it's actually delicious. So anyway, that night when I made chicken parmesan, I made sure to have enough leftovers. And then we had lunch another day with fresh veggies and some leftover pizza. And if you're trying to save money on groceries, rice is a great staple to have because rice is one of the cheapest foods and leftover rice is so easy to put into things like soups stir fries. And one thing that I like to do is I like to make little rice pancakes using eggs and a little shredded cheese and a little green onions with some salt and savory seasonings. And I make rice pancakes for my kids. Then they can take them in their school boxes to lunch the next day. So if you have been throwing away leftover rice, 
Do not. There's so many ways to use leftover rice and leftovers in general. Almost anything can be turned into a stir fry, honestly. Speaking of finding stuff in the back of your pantry, I actually found some bamboo shoots that I had forgotten that I had in there. So I was able to add those bamboo shoots into a nice chicken and green bean stir fry over rice that the boys really enjoyed. How do you guys like the bamboo? It's uh, good. Are you guys little pandas? Mm -hmm. Do pandas love bamboo? Yeah. yeah. Out of 10, how good is it? I say 10 plus. So I would say as far as saving money on groceries and food, some of my biggest, most favorite tips are to shop your pantry, keep an audit and know what you have and use the ingredients that you actually already have and plan around those and to keep a meal plan and then also to reduce food waste because there is so much food waste that's just thrown away every single year. And that's literally just money being thrown out. And a lot of you have been asking me how I plan my meals. So I will make sure to link to my meal planning template down below, as well as the complete minimalist budget binder that has all the no spin challenge and budgeting printables that you've been seeing me using and hearing me talk about during this entire challenge. Another question that I got asked a lot about is like, what happens if there's a holiday? And that actually did happen to us because right at the beginning of February, in fact, February 1st was Chinese New Year, which if you're new around here, you might not know, but my husband is Chinese and we are a multicultural family and we celebrate stuff like Thanksgiving alongside Chinese New Year. And normally we would spend Chinese New Year with the rest of my in-laws celebrating an, a huge feast. Because of the current state of health and the pandemic, everyone decided to eat in their own households this year. So we didn't have a big Chinese New Year celebration. So so if you want to do a no spend challenge, but you have a holiday, you could always make it an exception or you could postpone it. There's a lot of ways to approach that. For Chinese New Year, what we did is we just shopped our own pantry. We had a huge duck in our freezer that we defrosted and my husband made a duck dish. We made some lucky fish because if you're familiar with Chinese culture, it's good luck to eat fish in the new year. And you always, always want to make sure to leave some fish for the next day so that you have a surplus from one day to the next. It's funny because I think a lot of cultures have these beliefs because when I was little, my grandma, whose family were Hungarian immigrants, always made pigs in the blanket for New Year and she would make me eat pigs in a blanket and I did not like it whatsoever, but now I do. Anyway, so we made sure to eat a lot of the lucky Chinese food and then for Valentine's Day, normally we don't spend any money on Valentine's Day. It's just not something that we celebrate as a family. My husband and I just never really cared about it, minimalist or not minimalist. But it's funny because this year we did have one slip up on Valentine's Day. My husband just totally forgot about the no spin challenge and one morning he just decided to grab some broichen, which is like little bread loaves and some France broichen from the local bakery. So he slipped up, spent money and when he got home I was like, oh! So he spent, it was $4.96. So that was one of the one and only slip ups. Uh, it was pretty tasty, so I'm not complaining. Another question that I get related to no spend challenges is what about emergencies? So I totally get it, especially as a mom, life happens and emergencies happen. And sometimes it's better to spend a little bit of money taking care of and fixing the thing so that it doesn't become a bigger problem later. This can be related to health or maybe your house. You know, if the roof starts leaking, are you gonna leave it for a month just because you're doing a no spin challenge? I don't think that's a very good idea. If you're doing a no spin challenge and you have an emergency happen, you can choose to count it as an exception or you can still write it down. So what I did is we did have an emergency. Actually, we had two emergencies. We had one emergency spend where my son pulled a muscle at school, his leg was hurting. And so that night after he came home, my husband had to run to the apotheca and he had to buy some muscle cream to put on my son's leg. So he's feeling much better two days later. You know, we wrote him a note to excuse him from gym class, but that was just something that gave him a little bit more comfort and peace of mind and was money well spent. So we spent 1618 for that. And then there was another emergency related to my son's teeth 
but because we have insurance, we did not have to spend any money for that. I mean, I think no matter who you are, what stage of life you're in, where you live at, there's always going to be emergencies that crop up, usually when you least expect them. So it's okay to spend money to take care of things in an emergency. And at this point, I just wanna go back and talk a little bit about the three different levels that I identified for the no spin challenge, which is easy, medium, and boss mode. And originally I had said I was gonna to try to do boss mode and I was gonna to try to make extra money by selling my clutter on places like Facebook Marketplace or you could sell on eBay or Craigslist or whatever. But again, another emergency happens. I was working on splitting my blog with a tech guy and his family unfortunately had gotten COVID and he was sick and then that got pushed back until February. And then I found myself in February suddenly trying, he was doing all of this stuff. I had to work with the back end. I was fixing things that were going wrong. There were links that weren't working. People were emailing me about printables that they couldn't find. So I just didn't have the time to put into listing my stuff. By the time I was actually able to start photographing and listing my items, there were only a couple days left at the end of the month. And I was just like, you know, I don't think I'm gonna make much money because sometimes things can sit for a while. So I will try to sell them. It's just not gonna make it for this video. So that is something that fell by the wayside. But like I said, life happens and you just gotta roll with the punches. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give my items another 30 days after this no spin challenge to sell. And then if not, I will just give them away in a buy nothing group or donate them. And by the way, I forgot to mention buy nothing groups. If you are really serious about doing a no buy month or even trying a full no buy year, buy nothing groups are your friend because you can go in and request almost anything if you have a real emergency or a need and people will do it. I've seen people give away computers. I've seen people give away TVs. I've seen people giving away almost entire like kitchens just for free that they want to get it out of the house. So if you are really serious about saving money and you want to go buy nothing for a longer period of time, I highly recommend that you go on Facebook and you join a buy nothing group in your local area. And it's a great place for you to give away all of that extra clutter that you're decluttering from your home as well. And as far as how did my kids and my husband do with the no spin challenge, I would say it went really great for us as a family. And that's probably because we are very open with our communication and we talked about it before and we talked about the different rules that we were gonna have. So they were totally on board, my husband was totally on board and everyone was really working together. And in fact, there was one time when I remember, I don't remember what we were talking about, but my son shook his finger and he was like, uh, 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 we're on a no spend month. You know what they really loved was they really loved helping me color in the squares on the no spend month challenge printable. Like that was the most exciting part of it all for them. So seriously, if you have kids, having a printable like that and having them help with that is so motivating. Okay, so now the moment of truth I'm sure you've all been wondering about is how much money did we spend during our no buy month? So we're not counting things like essentials like utilities or house payments because those need to be paid, but things that we were trying to save on like groceries, shopping, etc. how did we do? For this no spend challenge, we spent 650 euros on groceries, 4.96 euros on eating out, and 16.18 euros on medicine for my son, for a grand total of 671 and 14 euros. And to give you a better idea of where our grocery spending falls, I will make sure to leave a link to the USDA average cost of food at home that shows the average of food spending per household for all different sizes and ages. So that's what I've always used to plan our grocery budget. And because we are a family of four with two children in the older age range on this little chart, our spending was 650 euros, convert that to 730 USD, which means that we are right in the middle between the thrifty and the low cost plan for families in the USA. So I am usually trying to keep us in or below the low cost plan for groceries, but still keep my family eating as if we were on the liberal tier, if that makes sense to you. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you enjoyed doing this no spin challenge with me again, 
Please hit the like button if you haven't already and maybe consider subscribing to join our minimalist family if you love videos about decluttering, minimalism, and simple living. And don't forget to comment and let me know how you did with your no spin challenge if you haven't already. And I'll see you again next week. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.